For the research of my wildcat guide, I had to play a lot in the passenger seats of vehicles, and I've learned that they're kind of underrated. If you don't mind being dragged along for a random adventure, then you can have some really good high kill games. So I decided to take this to the extreme. Every opportunity to play passenger I would. It didn't matter what vehicle, squad or teammate, I would hop in and support that vehicle with my full effort. My hope here is that I can learn what works, what doesn't, give you all some tips and hopefully encourage you all to help friendly armor out by being that plus one. So many times these seats go completely unused, even when you're pushing objectives and supporting your team. DICE made most of these vehicles have four or more seats, probably due to the expectation of more players needing to be transported around, but what they did in fact do is make vehicles capable of destroying uncoordinated teams. But here's the problem, most vehicles only have one player in it, leaving the full potential completely unrealized. Even by just having a gunner, you can have so much more survivability because that's another set of eyes to keep a lookout for bad guys. The first thing you're going to want to figure out when you jump into a vehicle is what it is equipped with. If the vehicle isn't full, then flick through the seats offered and try and figure out what you have at your disposal. The main driver has movement and countermeasures to worry about, whereas you have a lot more flexibility to seat swap. Knowing what you have on offer ahead of time can help you determine what weapons you should be using for what situation. For example, if you're in a main battle tank equipped with a tow missile on the secondary seat and a mortar pod in the third, then you'll likely want to use the mortar pod to deal with infantry threats and close range armor, and the tow missile for those long range vehicle hits and aircraft. It is of course perfect if you know which targets your available weapons are most effective against, but if you haven't had a lot of experience with these vehicle's weapons, you might not know the right situation to use them. Just because a specific weapon is doing damage against something doesn't mean that it's its best target. More so, some of the weapons on offer seem like they would be great for dealing with a specific problem, but in fact are doing much smaller amounts of damage than you would expect. A good example is the 40mm grenade launcher, which is available as a secondary weapon on a lot of vehicles. It seems like it would do pretty decent damage against vehicles, however they only do single points of damage to medium or heavy tanks. In this case, it might be better for you to use your pod to help against these vehicles, or to just focus on being another set of eyes on the lookout for your actual effective targets, infantry. The problem is that there's so many weapons that it can be hard to remember most of them. So here's what I recommend, turn on damage numbers. This way you can get immediate feedback on how effective your shots are and then use that to determine whether it's worth continuing to shoot your target or not. To do this, head into the options menu, then display, then HUD general. Then under the section damage numbers, change damage number visibility from hide to one of the other options of your preference. There is a neat little example of what this will look like in game on the right. I have it set to score log and small and I think it's perfect. This is truly your best option but either way I wanted to break down all of the available choices you might find yourself manning, letting you know where they're most effective and whether they're good to equip to your own vehicles. I'll be breaking it down in terms of weapon station. These are most commonly C2, but in some vehicles like the Hovercraft or the MVV, there's multiple of these. Weapon pods, and then commander seats. I'll also be throwing together aircraft and ground vehicles in the same category when the general function of the weapon stays the same. Since they all function very similarly, I figured I'd bunch all of the machine guns together and then explain what makes them different. The 7.62mm minigun, the 7.62mm light machine gun, and the 12.7mm heavy machine gun are all anti-infantry machine guns offered as passenger options. They can also be effective against light vehicles and aircraft to varying degrees, however their main target should be infantry. The minigun has a short wind-up time which I find quite annoying. With the exceptions of the one equipped to the transport chopper, they have a very high spread which makes them a lot less effective at range. They offer the least damage of all of the machine guns per bullet, but the highest rate of fire. The transport chopper ones are more effective at range, but I believe this is to make up for how difficult they are to use in the air compared to on the ground. In terms of performance, the light machine gun is in the middle of the minigun and the heavy machine gun. It offers a good rate of fire and good damage, with much less spread, 
As such, it is much more effective at further ranges. I was finding success up to medium ranges and only had trouble against long range targets. Unlike the minigun, the light machine gun and the heavy machine guns do not have a wind up time, which to me makes them much more enjoyable. Finally, the heavy machine gun offers the highest damage per bullet with a much lower fire rate. As such, the spread is practically non-existent. Consequently, these are effective at all range if you're able to aim well. Even though the heavy machine gun is my preferred choice, I honestly find the HMG and the LMG very interchangeable. If you're good with one, then you're likely good with the other. The one on the stealth chopper is particularly difficult to use, but thankfully it doesn't overheat too quickly so you can get a couple of shots to connect if you just keep spraying in the general direction. All of these are good at taking care of the multiple players who are going to be running at you with C5. The last thing I wanted to say about these machine guns is that the infrared versions of them are vastly superior to the regular versions, but since not a lot of people have unlocked them yet they're fairly rare. They increase visibility which means your passenger will have a much easier time at identifying targets. The 40mm grenade launcher is a blast to play with if your driver is pushing and giving you the opportunity to use it in its optimal close range. These are definitely an anti-infantry weapon that is capable of destroying entire squads. Definitely keep your focus on infantry and light vehicles. Even though they deal damage to heavier targets, the damage is so small that it's not worth it. Also be careful to ration your shots, as they take a little to replenish. Nothing is more frustrating than wasting your shots than being driven to a group of enemies but being unable to kill them because you're waiting for your shots to recover. Given their ease of use and for giving splash damage, I would strongly recommend these. Oh the 30mm cannon, how the mighty have fallen. This weapon used to be so good but after multiple nerfs it's definitely fallen out of favour. In fact now it's only available on the attack choppers. They're good against infantry and light ground vehicles and even aircraft if you're able to hit them. Since these work on a cooldown system rather than a fixed set of ammo, you can even deal with heavier targets if you adopt the death by a thousand paper cuts method, aka just keep hitting them. They look amazing on paper, but they're very quick to overheat. As such, unless you're directly hitting infantry, then you'll be lucky to kill two of them before hitting that painful overheat. They also have a little bit of splash damage which makes missing your shots a bit more forgiving. I believe that tapping gave me better results than full auto firing. I was able to roughly shoot around the same speed and overheat at a slower pace, but this could just be a placebo effect. The 50mm cannon is pretty good against everything, capable of doing just fine damage against ground targets. I had most success using the 50mm against infantry and against aircraft. The shots are able to one-shot infantry if you hit them directly, which means that if you're good with them you can be a force to be reckoned with. If you aren't able to direct hit, then the weapon can be quite the struggle, since the splash damage is quite significantly lower than that of a clean shot. Also, considering the slow rate of fire, the slow travel time, and the slow replenish rates of the rounds, you're going to want to practice these clean hits. I would frequently use this as an anti-vehicle tool to achieve fair results and if you're able to land shots against aircraft you deal quite a significant amount of damage to them. The transport chopper variant does a little more damage against vehicles and considering how much harder it is to aim while being flown I think this makes sense. The 40mm auto cannon is like the little brother of the 50mm cannon. It trades out some of the damage for faster firing, quicker regenerating and what feels like a little faster travel speed. I would suggest using these in a similar place as the 50mm cannon. It is not able to one hit infantry so at longer ranges you might want to depend on another one of your weapons. Honestly I find both the auto cannon and the 50mm a little underwhelming unless you're getting direct hits against infantry which is quite difficult in both cases. Even though the 25mm APDS functions very similarly to the 50mm and the 40mm auto cannon I much prefer it. The shots lose almost all of their splash damage and instead gain a decent amount of damage against vehicles. I would strongly recommend saving these for vehicles and using something else for infantry since the 8 shots you have are a valuable tool for helping your cav combat enemy armour and considering the low splash damage you'll likely be wasting your shots against enemy infantry anyway. 
These feel so satisfying to use. Something about them just feels more snappy compared to the previously mentioned cannons. Also of note is the insane amount of damage which they do to aircraft. If you've ever flown next to a cav and been absolutely chunked by something, then you were likely a victim of a 25mm APDS shot. Another critical thing to know is that if your cav isn't equipped with this weapon, then you better hope that your driver stays far away from other medium and up ground vehicles, since without this you have no way of fighting back. If you find yourself in the case where your driver wants to 1v1 a main battle tank without this, then I pray for you. The tube launched optically tracked wire guided missile is a missile that follows wherever you're aiming. These are immensely fun to use and it makes me wish that we could get a portable infantry version of this weapon in 2042. Considering how hard these are to hit while your driver is moving and their painfully slow replenish time, their damage is just fine. They do decent damage numbers against ground vehicles and if you're able to get a direct hit against nightbirds, stealths, attack choppers or jets, you'll be rewarded with an instant kill and it's insanely satisfying. Against infantry, you'll need a direct hit to kill and because of the long reload time and the low splash damage, I would recommend not even going for infantry with the tow missiles. The barrage missiles are very misleading to a lot of players. They seem like they would be perfect against ground vehicles, but they're actually supposed to be used against infantry. When you fire, it fires all four rockets at the same time, and it can fire at any time regardless of how many missiles are currently loaded. They're pretty good against infantry and groups of infantry, but strangely enough these lock onto targets tagged by the Softlam Tracer Dart or Rauhak, which is just a really weird choice since they don't do a lot of damage against vehicles. Upon further testing I noticed that they can be pretty effective against aircraft which have been tagged, provided they aren't flared away they do pretty good damage. The anti-tank missiles are awesome, similar to the ones which you can equip as the driver in the Wildcat, it can only be used on ground vehicles unless the other targets are tagged. Aim at your target, it takes a little time to lock on, and then you'll be able to let the missile go. The missile will launch up and then fly straight towards the target. However, it can be easily countered by thermal smoke, which can make its slow replenish rate a little frustrating. They're very easy to use and they do very good damage. This can help make up for some of the weaknesses that rams have dealing with armor. Be sure to use it if you have the opportunity. The anti-air missiles are very much the air version of the anti-tank missiles. But unfortunately, these suffer the same weaknesses as other anti-air lock missiles in the game. Flares are just too effective so much so that these are practically useless. If your ram is full and you have nothing else to do, then sure, fire it off, but don't be surprised when the only thing you're getting done with these is scaring enemy aircraft away. The EMP field grenade is amazing and it really upsets me that more people don't use them. It can massively make the difference in a 1v1 tank or chopper fight. They are fast and they don't have too much drop compared to similar projectiles and will completely shut down an enemy vehicle making it unable to fight back. There is no reason to use these against anything other than vehicles since having the EMP affect infantry is useless. I honestly think DICE making people use their grenade button instead of a second slot is why people don't use this very often. Very useful, very fun, would recommend. The 40mm case, also known as the CAV's shotgun, is a very fun tool. With a really fast fire speed, it's best used against close range infantry and light vehicles. It can also be used pretty decently against any aircraft that get too close. Unlike the pod which works similar to the 40mm case, the rate of fire is so high that you can keep spamming it in order to get those longer range shots. Definitely good, but as I mentioned, if you don't have the 25mm APDS, then any sort of medium or heavy armour is going to walk all over your cav. The 20mm flak weapon is inconsistent and I hate it. Even when gathering the damage numbers against stationary aircraft at close range, I was sometimes doing very little damage and sometimes very high damage, and I couldn't seem to replicate what was causing this. I noticed this even before Season 5, when you could only equip it to your cav, and because the damage I was getting was so low, I immediately removed this from my loadout. I'm assuming the damage is dependent on how the flak explodes and how it interacts with the aircraft. It's fun when it works, hell I'd even say it's slightly overpowered, 
But when it doesn't, it's infuriating. Against ground vehicles and infantry, I wouldn't even bother. The damage is very low. Before I started playing like this, I would have said that the 40mm incendiary grenade launcher was garbage, and in every situation where I'm given one to use, I would have preferred the regular 40mm grenade launcher. But after I've had more experience with it, it really isn't that much different. The incendiary rounds can only be used to damage infantry, so there's no point in using them against armour. If you've ever been on the receiving end of these, you can attest to the disorienting effect that they cause. There is so much fire and chaos caused by them that it can be hard to fight back when you've been targeted by them. They do however have this annoying reload attribute, where none of your rounds will replenish until you've used all 8 of your shots, which means you should always spend all of your shots between fights so that you're fully reloaded before the next engagement. If you forget about this, you'll find yourself mid-fight waiting for your grenades to recover. The 20mm canister shot on the LATV is just plain fun. It works like a shotgun, so in order for the projectiles to hit, they require your targets to be very close. If all of the canister lands on an enemy infantry, you'll be rewarded with a one-shot kill. I strongly encourage people to try this out more. I know the 20mm flak is the new in thing, but the 20mm canister can make the LATV a hit and run machine. However, keep in mind that it doesn't affect medium or heavy vehicles, so you should stick to using it against mainly infantry and occasionally light armour. Moving on to the weapon pods, the 40mm canister shot is a shotgun-like pod which is very effective against close range infantry, with a direct hit being able to instantly kill. This is a great weapon for countering people trying to C5 rush you, because you can immediately shut them down. It's slower than the 40mm case equipped on the cav, but not by too much. The load time is enough that if you miss or fail to kill, you'll probably be able to get them with a follow-up round. I've also found that it's pretty decent at scaring away any enemy choppers that get too close. It doesn't affect medium or heavily armoured targets, so don't waste your rounds, but despite this I had a lot of fun with them. With the kinetic grenade, the hardest thing was actually finding players who had these equipped. It's a very awkward weapon to use. These grenades are designed to bounce a lot, so you can lob them through doorways and into tight spaces. Unfortunately, out in the open, they're quite difficult to use. You'll frequently find that you're overshooting your targets because the grenade bounces past whatever you're aiming at before exploding. You'll get the most out of them against infantry and groups of enemies, since the explosion range is quite large and frequently kills in one. If you're on these, I recommend just throwing them into enemy points instead of focusing on players who are out in the open. They're fun when they work, but most of the time they don't. The rocket weapon pod is an anti-vehicle pod that fires four rockets in quick succession. It looks very similar to the barrage missiles, which is massively misleading since the barrage missiles are actually for anti-infantry, and this is for anti-tank. A quick way to figure out which is which is checking if you can fire a single rocket once it's loaded. If you can, it's the barrage missile. However, if you have to fire all four and then wait for them to all reload, then you're on the rocket weapon pod. This pod is great for dealing with all ground vehicles, doing a good chunk of damage with a full barrage hit within close to medium range. They aren't too suited for long range, since the rockets drop quite significantly as they travel and start to disperse, meaning that you won't be able to connect with all four rockets. Not too many people have these equipped, but they're certainly effective if your driver is moving around and engaging with enemy vehicles at close to medium ranges. The 60mm flak pod is just fine. It should only be used on aircraft, as against infantry and armour its damage is very low. Once the launched flak round is close to an aircraft, it will explode dealing a burst of damage, which makes the shots that are seemingly going wide of your target result in hits. However, the fired rounds move so slowly that tracking aircraft that are even at medium ranges becomes very difficult. At close ranges, you'll absolutely be able to wreck choppers, but anything beyond that becomes a frustrating task. For this reason, I would say that I would probably avoid these since they're very situational. The 40mm volley is probably my least favourite pod, which makes it even more annoying that so many people have it equipped. The pod fires a volley of 4 grenades in a very short range arc. The main prey of the 40mm volley is infantry as the rounds don't do a lot of damage to vehicles. 
My main issue with this option is that the range is so limited. The rounds drop immediately and hard, meaning that if you're on this pod and your driver is fighting enemies outside your range, then you're essentially sitting in a dead seat. The damage on this pod isn't anything to write home about either, which just makes this pod kind of bad, especially when compared to the next pod. You can't stop me, I'm gonna say it, the 60mm mortar pod is the GOAT. Take the 40mm volley pod, give it much more significant range, make it do much more damage, let it be quite effective against vehicles, and make it really fun to use, then you found the formula to get this absolute beast of a pod. I swear, I have more fun on this thing than I have in the main driver's seat most of the time. Hitting infantry at medium range with this thing is so satisfying. Choosing the correct angle of fire, launching the shot and watching it go up and then slam down on your unsuspecting prey. Damn, it just gives me chills thinking about it. Dear Dice, please give this weapon its own sound cue. Make the round scream when it's coming down and it would be such an easy but awesome effect. 100% would recommend this pod. Lastly, let's touch on the commander seat. The sensor array has clearly been forgotten by DICE. Its purpose was to spot infantry before spotting was introduced as something you could do normally. Usually, you would aim this at an enemy and when you click the fire button it would mark them for your team. However, it frequently fails. Instead, I found using the spotting key would just straight up work more consistently. The detection pulse is a pretty useful tool that I don't think gets utilized too much. When deployed, it scans the nearby area and highlights on the map enemies within the scan's radius to everyone inside the vehicle. It is important to note that this does not spot enemies, it just marks them on your map. If your friendly vehicle is in a tight area, it's worth swapping to this seat and deploying it. Just to quickly get an idea on whether there is anyone camping around you who you might want to deal with before they deal with you. Something to note is that if you deploy the scan and then leave the seat, the scan will no longer show nearby enemies, even though it appears on the map as if the scan is still going off. Well that's all the seats covered. Now I just want to provide some tips which I found while playing as a passenger, which can help you and your driver make the most of the vehicle. Be constantly vigilant. Your role as a passenger should be to keep your vehicle alive. You're a critical second set of eyes, so make sure that you aren't getting tunnel vision on whatever the driver is also focusing on. Every so often, take a second to quickly survey the area to make sure that you aren't being approached by anyone wielding C5. You are the best defense against these players. I found myself frequently saving my friendly vehicles from enemies charging at me. If you're unable to kill them with what you're using in the vehicle, then hop out and blast them with your primary weapon. It should be noted that you usually exit the vehicle in the direction which you're looking. Just being aware of this can help you react faster. Use your equipment. Just because you're stuck on the LMG during a 1v1 tank fight doesn't mean that you just have to sit and watch. If your plane is an engineer, hop out and blast them with your rocket launcher before retreating back into the vehicle. This can give your friendly armor the much needed edge. Hop out the back and start repairing them. Deploy an Irish Sentinel to counter rockets. Deploy a Blasco infiltration device to block enemy lock-ons. Throw an EMP grenade. Or if you're close to them, throw C5 on them. My point is that you can be much more flexible than the driver in these situations. So be sure to help out wherever you can. Your in-game life is worth less than the vehicle, so do whatever you can to protect the armor. As always, I would recommend climbing on the top of friendly vehicles to get a ride along so that they don't leave you. Spot, spot, spot. For the love of god people, start using the spotting function. You should be hitting the spot on every enemy, vehicle or device you see. Especially in a vehicle since it can tell your other passengers what they should be looking at and ultimately what to be cautious of. If you see an enemy tank in the distance, ping it. If you see mines on the road, ping them. If you see a sniper glint way in the distance, ping it. All of this information can be seen by your entire team, so even if you aren't in a position to deal with it, your friendlies who are can be notified about it. On top of this just being good practice, you'll also get spot assists as a reward for someone else dealing with the problem you highlighted. I would say this is especially important in choppers, 
where a lot of players have trouble knowing what they should be looking at. Let's say you're the main pilot of an attack chopper. Sure, you could use three of those 127mm rockets to kill that infantry on the hill, but if you ping it for your passenger, they can use their 30mm cannon to deal with it, meaning that you'll save rockets for something more important. And you also give your passenger something fun to do, thus encouraging them to stay around. Know when to leave. Sometimes your driver will just want to sit at the back of the map and be dead weight. Most of the passenger weapons excel at medium to close ranges, so if they aren't pushing objectives and getting into scraps, then it'll have nothing to do. At that point, I just recommend abandoning them and go find something more productive to do. Seat swap constantly. If the vehicle is in full, then I would encourage you to seat swap in order to use the best available tool for your current situation. Your main battle tank might be fighting another tank while you're on the heavy MG. Swap to your third seat in order to use that unmanned rocket pod to help out. Has your friendly MAV just rolled into a building in order to capture the point inside? Swap to the commander seat and deploy a scan to figure out where enemies are camping, then swap to your mortar pod to flush them out. This can be so much fun and gives you plenty of variety. Don't steal the driver's seat. There may be situations where you're required to take control of the vehicle. Maybe the driver is repairing and while sitting patiently on your heavy MG you're approached by a tank so you decide to swap to the driver's seat in order to use the main gun to dispatch of it. This is perfectly fine to do, in fact I encourage it, but remember that this tank is not yours. Once the danger is resolved, swap back to your passenger seat and let the owner take command. Stealing vehicles from friendlies is just bad manners. Lastly, I just wanted to add some tips for drivers in order to make your passenger's job easier. Move out of smoke. If you deploy smoke and enemies are potentially around, then make sure you move out of the smoke to a safe location. Nothing is more frustrating as a passenger than having a target running at you with C5, then to have them be concealed by your friendly driver's smoke and finally end up being blown up as a result. Escape plan. Try to avoid putting yourself in a position where you're unable to quickly exit. Specifically, if you roll into a building, make sure your front end or back end are pointing towards an exit so that you can make a speedy retreat and give your passengers some time to deal with the threat. Leave no one behind. If you have a passenger who jumps out to repair or to drop a rocket on an enemy, don't leave them behind. Give them a second to climb back in. If you need to move, try moving slowly at first to give them a clue that you need to leave. And if you have to abandon them, make sure you head back to them once the threat is resolved. Good passengers are an asset to you and you want to encourage them to stick with you. Push and pull. You should keep an eye on what the rest of your team is doing. Make sure that you're pushing objectives slowly, clearing them out before rushing in for the capture. Pull back if the heat becomes too much and reset. Ultimately, your actions will determine whether your run will be a good one or a bad one. Just please, don't camp at the back of the map. Thanks bud. Did you enjoy your ride? When it comes to an end, send a friendly message in chat to let them know that it was a good run. You want more players playing like this, so pass the positivity around. Awesome, thanks for watching. This one was a long one, so if you've made it this far, then I would like to thank you so much. Let me know in the comments what your favourite passenger weapon is, and whether you would consider playing as a passenger more after this video. And as always, like, comment and subscribe for more. You guys are fantastic. I hope to see you on the battlefield. Take care.